He did? We now join our program already in progress. Don't you think we should figure it out? Oh, well, now, I did recall Blake seemed to be acting a little hysterical, like a nut before the wedding. But I really didn't give it much thought. <laughs> Considering the fact she comes from you and Holly, it seems like she's just a regular old genetic Molotov cocktail. Save the act. It's all over your face. This little present from Alan bothers you, doesn't it? Not in the least. What was it? A clock. A wound clock. Well, then that just proves Alan does have a sense of humor, doesn't he? <laughs> a rather black one, but... Oh, come on. What kind of sense of humor does a man have after five years in prison? And I hear he's getting out this year. Yes. Sometime after Christmas, I believe. Well, obviously he spent more time thinking about us than we have spent preparing for him. Us, uh, Roger. There is no us. There hasn't been an us for you. Well, look at it from Alan's perspective, if you will. See, we were married less than a year after his verdict. Now, even if he does keep up with the local gossip, I doubt he's forgiven you for inviting me into your bed. Well, no wonder. I've hardly forgiven myself. I don't think it was so abhorrent to you at the time. <sighs> Did you come here just to sort of fluff your little rooster feathers, or is there some point to this visit? Be smart. We can manage all this a whole lot better if we cooperate. Otherwise, we're just playing into your brother's hands. Divide and conquer, remember? Let's not make it so easy for him. Oh, please don't be so dramatic, Roger. Besides, you haven't convinced me Alan has any agenda, let alone using Spalding to hurt anyone. You sure? He can't! All of his assets were tied up in a trust before he went to prison. He can't touch anything without the consent of the trustees. <laughs> I think you're one of them. Who are they? <laughs> well, myself, of course. I've forgotten the others. We won, we won, we won, we won, we won, we won. <laughs> Honey, everybody wants something. That's sort of the point. Destined to be together longest. Nobody else won that one. Well, most of the couples in there have been together over 45 years. Now, given the normal lifespan, how could we lose? Have you ever thought about what it would be like to be married to somebody for that long? I mean, without it being impossible or, or terrifying or something? Terrifying? Well, maybe terror's the wrong word. Maybe what, what I'm talking about is, I don't know. We're like being disillusioned. You know, considering the divorce statistics, of which I was a major contributor. Ah, it's all in the past. Yeah. I knew marrying you would be different. But being here with all these wonderful people, it feels like it's something that... It's something that I wasn't so much hoping for, and it's just more something we're really doing. There you two are. It's the Charleston contest in five minutes. <laughs> okay, so what do you want to do between now and our golden anniversary? I've always wanted to go camping in Nova Scotia. I don't even know what it looks like. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. One of those beautiful tents from Maine with a Bunsen burner and everything. It just sounds so beautiful and quiet. <laughs> Oh, shit. That's not exactly what I expected you to say, love. Well, it's different now. I think I could do a lot of things that I would never do alone. Or with the wrong person. That's the worst. Going to these wonderful, amazing places, places and being with the wrong person. Well, you don't have to worry about that anymore. No. What about you, huh? What do you want to do with the next couple of decades or so? I'd like to get that loose tile fixed in the kitchen. Oh. No, actually, I was thinking of a place, too. Big Sur in California. Now, I know it was a hot spot for the flower generation, so no wisecracks, please. <laughs> Big Sur. Yeah, it's magnificent. I mean, there are giant redwoods on one, one side, and then, uh, there, are, there are cliffs on the other <laughs> side, and I just got to thinking that I don't know, maybe on our 10th anniversary, let's say, I'd like to just stand on those rocks at sunset with the sea crashing below us. I'd like to renew our vows. In bow bottoms? <laughs> maybe. Why not? So what do you say? I say, you still have a lot of surprises left in you. And I say it's a date. You know, all those wonderful places that Lou and March were talking about going to? Yeah, like Tahiti. 
I could do Tahiti. Yeah, Tahiti, they put baguettes in your mailbox. <laughs> what about a bike ride through Provence or Florence? Venice? Yes. However, uh, we might have to take time out for a short trip to Adventureland. Well, sure, I mean, I'm, I'm game for anything. <laughs> That's more for the kids, though, don't you think? Is that what you were thinking? If that's what you were thinking. on your victory. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, for a minute there, I thought we were going to get shut out, you know? Yes, Blake was very worried uh, when she didn't win the Best Redhead Award. She thought the fix might be in, you know? Oh, <laughs> you're such a doll. You'd sweep everything if we didn't rig it a little. <laughs> now, don't forget the Midnight Masquerade boat drill. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, we thought we should share a toast before you head back to the real world. Here's to your new life together. And to all the wonderful and unexpected things it may bring. Your heart's desire. How do you know that I haven't found it at last? Because Holly only ever qualified when you didn't have her. Oh, dear, look around, Roger. You must be missing all of this terribly. I know I did. <laughs> Look around. Everything you see here, you've lost. Yeah. Mm. But my fingerprints are all over it. Fingerprints are all over what? I was just, um, watching Roger eye the silver and reminding him not to get any big ideas on his way out the door. That robe used to be mine, too. You pig. Why'd you even bother to I open the door? I didn't. I didn't. Much less offer him a drink. I didn't offer. He took. Come on, it was raining. I was absolutely startled to see him. I didn't expect to see him. If I'd had a moment to think, I wouldn't have let him pass the threshold. So I drove by the construction site yesterday. Oh, you came by? Well, yeah, I was driving by on the way to the pediatrician. Well, well, I wasn't really on my way, but you guys have really gotten a lot of work done, haven't uh, you? I'll tell you, we have the best crew. We should be done framing the walls by the end of the week, and then we'll put the trusses up. What are trusses? The pieces that hold up the roof. Oh, the triangly things? Yeah, oh. on a pitched roof, that's what they look like, right. You know, uh, I want to tell you, you've done a really great job with that pantry door. It doesn't even stick anymore or anything. Good. Glad. Talk about this weather, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it was gorgeous there for a couple of days, and then mm. this. We really do need the rain, though. Yeah. Would you stop me, please? I'm talking about the weather. <laughs> you don't have to entertain me. We can be quiet for a minute. Well, my brain keeps yelling, Bridget, shut up, and my mouth just keeps going. <laughs> It's, this is strange. We have dinner almost every night together, either at company or the boarding house kitchen. Yeah, but, you know, you put it in a different setting and everything's different. Is it? Well, yeah. I mean, this is a date. We've been out before. Well, I don't know. I, you know, dinner dates for me usually are... are I try to stretch him out as long as I can so that I can figure the guy out before he tries to make his move on me. Mm. Well, you can relax. We got lots of courses here. After dessert, we have uh, cheese and then some more salad. And, and if you're still not sure about me, you can smoke a cigar. I'm so sure about you, it scares me. No one's ever taken care of me the way that you do. I'm happy to do it. What? For not making this more fun for you, I'm, I'm sorry I'm so nervous. 
Bridget, I may be hiding it, but I'm I'm pretty nervous myself. One man's honeymoon. I just never thought that Victor would marry her. He was my life. He was everything to me. He is the only man that I ever truly loved. I don't know that I will never be able to let go. Is another woman's nightmare in daytime. This week on The Young and the Restless. What have you got in your hand? Marge and Liz's dress. <laughs> You know, they're still so much in love. It's just amazing. They like each other, too. That's important. They certainly do have a good time together. <laughs> what? Just thinking about Lou's secret for a long and happy marriage. Oh, you mean about staying out of my way in the kitchen? But always helping with the dishes. <laughs> well, I think we're a lock for our golden anniversary because I'm hardly ever in there. Lou's deep, honey. I think he meant much more than that. <laughs> well, maybe he meant just kind of giving me a lot of space, but always being there to make sure you help clean up the mess. Too obvious, too obvious. Give me that. Maybe it's an anagram. You know all those places we talked about going? Italy and... <sighs> Why couldn't we really do that? Let's hope with the dishes. In a word, time. Well, we have plenty of time. We have the award to prove it. Okay, if I rearrange Lou's letters here, keep her in stitches and shower her with riches. Honey, I don't think the secret's in the words. No, wait a minute. This is it. Ply her with knishes and fondle her fish. <laughs> No. You know what it's about? It's about the passage of time. It's about doing what we do, but doing it together. It's about us getting better with time. Time is good if you're a cheese or a wine. Time is not so good if you're shoe leather. I can't wait. Till I'm an old shoe? Till enough time has passed where my nervousness and your caution and all the other little birds have all worn away and all that's left is how much we really love and appreciate each other. Kind of like a piece of sea glass that sparkled when it was first cut. But it feels so good in your hand. It's beautiful. Nobody's ever made growing old sound so appealing. Getting better. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's bad enough I thought this was Alan's, but throw ups? It's just a robe for heaven's sake. Roger never even wore that. It's just Roger's way of being Roger. Why did you even let him in the door? <laughs> he wanted to talk about Alan. Alan evidently sent Blake a wedding gift. Yes, I know all about that. Blake thought it was a time bomb. <laughs> Come on now, listen. We, we, we left some hors d'oeuvres and unfinished business I'm upstairs. I'm so hungry. You... Well, then what are you in the mood for? I'm... A drive. Up to Carrollwood Prison. Now, that's romantic. Well, it could be. I mean, we could pick a little picnic lunch on the limo. It could be a little adventure. Up to the state prison. <laughs> Come on now, I much preferred our original idea. Well, so did I. But Roger's changed my mood, reminding me I have a brother who's getting out of prison in six months who's holding a rather large grudge against me. I think it might be prudent to start being nice to Helen. <gasps> Come along with me. We can begin to welcome Alan back. If Alan is going to be in the cooler for another six months, can't this trip wait till the AM? Probably. But I can't. What happened to the other woman? She'll be back, I promise. <clears throat> Just be patient. Where are you going? Out to buy a new robe. Mike? Oh, 
Bobby. We're up on top of Stone Hill. Mm, that's nice. Oh, boy, some date I am, huh? I talk about the weather and then I zonk out. <laughs> you know, I spent an hour and a half picking out this tie. Mm, nice. I don't usually do that. I, I had five ties lined up in a row, and I'm sitting there staring at them. Finally, I just went down to the diner so David could help me pick one out. I usually don't care about things like that, but... You know, tonight was, uh... It's real important to me. I'm glad. You know, I was thinking about what you said before, about me having a certain for being attracted to a certain type of girl. Julie fed you that line after I left yesterday, didn't she? Yeah, she said a lot of stuff. You know I'm not like that. I mean, you know she was just trying to make trouble, right? Yeah, I know. So why you even listen to her? I don't know. Why don't you just kick her out? Well, I tried to. Actually, I did eventually. Uh, there's a little part of me that wonders what you see in me. Julie and I are so different, you know? Maybe it's the way you put your hand on my forehead when I was sick. Or looking into your big brown eyes. Or that dimple you get when you laugh at some stupid joke I make. Or watching the way you love Peter, the way you are with him, the way you fought for him. Are you telling me I put on all that, all that mascara for nothing? <laughs> I think you look beautiful. But yeah, I mean, I was already sold. I don't want you to think I'm going too fast or I'm taking anything for granted. It just feels so right being with you. I know you've never said you love me like I did in court that oh, day. Baby, yes, I have. I haven't? But I know I've told you that, that I, I've never felt this way about anyone before. Yeah, you said that. Oh, well, maybe I thought I said the words just because I've, I've thought about them so much. Goblets from Norm and Karen Peterson. Mother of the bride. Mom, it's the bride. Oh, hi. Are you still on the cruise? Yes, and still in love, and we're going to be married forever. Oh, that sounds like a swell idea. I got to tell you that we're coming home tomorrow. So soon? Yeah, but it's been great. We won an award. There was this big dinner, and they gave out those uh, these trophies to the couples. Uh huh. What did you win? Destined to be together longest, which is an omen if I ever heard one. <laughs> oh, that's great. I'm glad you're having a good time. I know it was a bit of a surprise for you. Well, I think Rose is brilliant not to do a typical glamour honeymoon. We have just learned how to live happily ever after. And I've decided that you and Dad should get married and retire. Well, I don't know about your dad and retirement. And uh, happily ever after is a whole other thing. But I'm sure glad it works for you. Okay, well, I gotta go, Mom. I love you. Love you, too. Bye. Back so soon. Do you have any luck? Nope. I'm gonna check on something. Yeah, it's Thorpe. I want to check on the status of an inmate at Carrollwood State Prison. Spaulding. Alan Spaulding. You know, all this talk about me <laughs> having a certain type of girl. I mean, it's not like I'm some kind of Don Juan. Right. No, really. I mean, I haven't been out with that many girls. I mean, I'm no monk. I'm not saying that either, but I don't know. I've always, I've always been so serious about things, even when I was younger. I learned at a very young age how much it can hurt to get close to somebody. 
Anyway, if I could take all the things that I loved about a girl or a woman, put them all together, that would be you. How, how you look, how brave you are, strong, soft, be all those things. You're just amazing, Bridget. You just know me. You just know me, and that's, that's what makes it feel so right. I don't have any doubts about you, Bridget. And if you don't either, I'd like to spend the night with you. All night. It's amazing how much this ring calms me. Really, I think this ring has magical properties. It calms me so much. I mean, after a lifetime of thinking that I was doomed and every relationship that I touched was going to disintegrate. <laughs> well, my dear, no other man was up to the task. <laughs> I practically had to be dragged into thinking that my life doesn't actually have to go wrong. This cruise and my marriage, even the silly little award, it's kind of given me some hope that I never had before. Oh. What? We've been married a week. Oh. It's our one week anniversary. Yeah. Let's see, 50 years is golden, 25 is silver, five is wood, one is paper, one week must be lint. Lint? <laughs> Oh, honey, I can't believe I had so many pre-wedding jitters. I even let what that fortune teller tell me spook me. Yeah, what, did, what did she say to you, other than you were going to marry an old shoe and live happily ever after? <laughs> I don't know, something about a, a man from my past. You keep staring at that thing as if it could speak. Why would Alan tip his hand? Why would he want to get us all thinking about him? How could he have sent that from prison? Oh, that's easy. All it takes is money. Hmm. I was relieved to learn that he still occupies that little cozy 8 by 8 cell the way he's supposed to. It is strange. Do you have any idea what he's up to? Nope. But I've got someone working on it. Sorry, we can't force the man to come out. But this is ridiculous. I've never heard of an inmate not wanting to see a visitor. Provided by Robert Rhodes.
Your ex-husband has taken you on a business trip, or so you think. What kind of business does Alan Michael have planned for Eleni tomorrow on Guiding Light? And all Luann wants is to have her son with her where it's safe. But how safe is it when a masked gunman has wants of his own tomorrow on The Young and the Restless?